And this is a Menelite interview. We'll uh, give it over to him so he can chair a little bit. Then we're out here in the cold, so if you end up seeing me having to huddle up next to him, it's to get warm. Oh, skateboard just hit over here. Okay, the kids are skateboarding out here, so it might be a little hard to hear some of this. So we're going to have to talk a little extra loud. Uh, Sound you hear is kids having fun, so enjoy. Yeah. So my name is Derek Burns. Oh. Uh, Teddy here asked me to share my testimony what Jesus has done in my life. And uh, when I was three years old, I accepted Jesus into my heart. Uh, I had what the knowledge of a three year old, of what my parents, both Christians, and taught me about the Lord. Um, but my idea of what Jesus did for me really wasn't like it was sin to me was stealing a cookie. And it wasn't that big of a deal. And growing up, uh, probably in my early teen years, um, I started just like doing different things and kind of saying the right things, but not really, um, not really um, living it out. And as the older I got, uh, the more I could see a, a separation in my life of saying the right things, but not really living it out. And uh, I got into um, a bunch of stuff and just, yeah, wasn't really living for the Lord. Um, Probably in my later teen years, I got into um, pornography, and that was something that like it held me back from serving the Lord, and it, it made me like a complete hypocrite. I was I would say one thing in church and around my friends and act one way, but then like I knew who I really was, and I wasn't completely surrendering my life to Christ. Um, actually, back when I was 10 years old, I used to steal candy from the store. I would walk in the store, go shopping, and I'd take candy off the shelves and it was kind of like a game to me. It was, it was pretty fun and I, I got better and better at it and it was like something that uh, I just that wasn't even really for the candy. It was just more for the fun. Uh, my mom caught me and uh, my parents uh, made me go back and raise money and pay them all back. Um, and a verse that comes to me when I think about that was the verse that says, uh, he that stole, let him steal no more. Let him work with his hands and think which is good that he may have to give to those that need. And I think that's, that's like the story of my life kind of right now. Just like, I think that's something that uh, is pretty sweet. Um, so anyhow, back to the other thing I was talking about. Um, it was about a year ago now. This is November, right? So it was about, about last November. Um, I had been struggling with pornography. I got, I got caught. Uh, I got a scam on my phone and I fell for it. And anyhow, the whole thing worked out. The Lord worked, used that to make me realize where I was at with that. and. Uh, um, I knew I had to deal with it, and it was something I had been praying about, but I never could get freedom. I tried my willpower, I tried self-discipline, I tried everything. I, I tried everything I could possibly do. It was something that I couldn't conquer on my own. And uh, so after I talked to a few people and got counsel with it, and uh, just really prayed about it, I spent a day fasting about it, and just realized the seriousness of my sin and where I really was, and that I wasn't really opening up and be honest about it. And just to have that freedom to talk to people about it, and uh, that week or that I mean, that that day, really, uh, Jesus set me free from from really just myself living for me, and that's something that was really it wasn't just pornography; it was my own idea of life, living for me, living for trying to build my own uh, kingdom, and. Um, so anyhow, it was probably about two weeks later that I was working one day and I was mixing mud. And all of a sudden, it just kind of came to me that not only had Jesus set me free from uh, the sin of that, but he gave me um, um, just, I realized, came to the realization that he, um, two words that came to me were um, that my sin was, sin. not only did Jesus forgive my sin, but he freed me from the shame, the shame and the guilt. And I don't know how to explain it, but it just kind of like overwhelmed me that day when I really realized what Jesus had done for me. And ever since then, it's just been great walking in that freedom. There's still, it was kind of like a, um, a stronghold was broken. And after it was broken, a whole different series of things, uh, the fear of man, um, just a bunch of different strongholds in my life were broken. Uh, it's not to say that, um, like, I don't, still don't like struggle. You know, everybody still struggles with sin, but like, just to have the, <laughs> What's up? You're on video, man. Oh, but that that stronghold's broken. I think that's that's the, the like the power of sin. And I think 
I think when you live in, in some sort of addiction or some sort of something that and there's really a stronghold and Satan really has a hold of you. But when Jesus sets you free, like, you can really actually be free from that. And just, yeah, that's uh, something that... Sorry. I just had to try to see if it was fun myself. For me, it's been this whole, it's been about a, been about a year. And just to walk in that freedom and to realize that um, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a person, I don't... Uh, just, it was probably two weeks ago I started realizing, you know what? I've been walking around like an, like an ex-sinner, like, but really, as Jesus set me free, he doesn't see me as an ex-sinner, he sees me as um, just like a child of his, he sees me as, uh, God sees me as like through Jesus, and just to be, to be in Christ is something that I'm still growing in and, and walking in, but it's just been a, it's been a great journey, and then after that, that's probably a couple months later, just like step after step of just different things I felt like after I had dealt with it and kind of sanctified my life and just like confessed my sins, um, there was just a whole new, it was something I never experienced before and I was, I had 21 years and like I would just, you know, said, said all the right things all my life and just walking in that, that, um, just kind of being, really being a hypocrite, honestly, and just to have freedom from that was something I, I can't really explain on a video, but oh, it's been a great, awesome um, journey. Just like, just different things that I felt like the Holy Spirit has been asking me to do, and just being able to take the steps in obedience, and He'll always give you another one and something else to do. And it's like, uh, actually, at one point it was stacking up so fast that I was like, I had five things that I felt like the Lord was telling me to do, and I, I knew the Lord asked me to do it. And I was like, uh, God, can you just give me some more time? And I was like, I want to do these things, but you know, like I will. But yeah, Jesus. The patientness, you know, just even with the kid coming over and messing with you, you know. I mean, that was kind of funny, but yeah. I'm saying <laughs> yeah. just what, you know, I'm sure you get that a lot. The kids messing with you here at the youth groups and different things. Um, but with with living it out, showing Christ's love, you know, sometimes I'm sure you get picked on to the point where you're just like, man, this kid, just leave me alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you got to, you know, continue to show the love of Christ to him. So it's like. You got any hard experiences you ever had to deal with, like where it was hard to really do that at times? Yeah, um, quite a few. Um, it's it's a daily it's a daily thing for me. Uh, one of the things that I was talking about that I felt like the Lord was asking me to do, um, it was actually it was great talking to you. I probably never even told you about it, but um, so when you were you were over at Rockville one Sunday and mm -hmm. we had a prayer meeting that was back in June. It was the first Sunday in June, and. I remember you, and it might have been even been you, and one of the, some one of the other guys, one of your friends was praying, and he was praying for the brand new wine terrace. I remember sitting beside Peter Skullsfoos, and I just got all uncomfortable in my seat. I started reaching around, and I'm like, I have something to do with this, but I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, I went home and talked to my sister about it. I was like, I'm not sure, but something, I'm supposed to be doing something, I'm not sure what it is. So I was like, maybe next weekend I can go and knock, knock door to door and start sharing Jesus. Like, I've never done that before. Maybe that would be, I'm trying to think of something, because like, I, I know for some reason I'm supposed to be doing something. This is this is weird. And then the very next day I was driving to work and I drove past with my work crew and I seen a sign and it said for rent. I was like, quick looked away and kept driving and I was just like, no. And I fought it all day. I was like, no, I'm I'm not I'm not doing it. I had on my own reasons. I want to live out my own. Like I just kind of went against everything I had planned for my life. And I thought back to the time when I repented of my sin and I told the Lord that. Hey, I wasted 21 years of my life. You can have the rest of it if you want. Like, if you can use it, go for it. Here I am. Like, just use me. And just, it was a continual, that whole next, that, it was like a whole day of just, really just, just being broken before the Lord and giving Him my life. And I had to think back to that. And so then that day I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going back on what I said. And so I said yes. And to, to doing that, but it took about a month or so until it, it all worked out. And just like things start fitting like one step after the other, like I had no control over. So wait, now I'm cool. interested in what you said. All right, for all those who don't know, Brandywine Terrace is, you know, kind of like, well, the slum trailer park in a way. It's like and the trailer park of all trailer parks. Um, right? <laughs> you know, I lived there for a long time. But, uh, you know, we prayed one time for people to go in there and start witnessing and stuff like that. So you're saying that you went in there and started witnessing, or? Yeah, well, I, 
I actually felt like I felt like the Lord was telling me to move in there. So you live in there? So I moved in there. Yeah. You living there now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amen. <laughs> that's see, that's the answer prayer I didn't even know about. They, they moved there since July. Oh, it's cool. The best thing that ever happened. To you, me. Uh, it's not like perfect, but it's it's really awesome. So you, uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with like Homer and Troy and all them and Troy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, his, his dad, dad and Tink. all them. Yeah, Tink. Yep. Oh, amen. Oh, yeah. So you're in there. You know, you get to talk or have any breakthroughs in there at all? There's a lot of different people, a lot of different needs. Um, yeah. Everybody, it's cool. Just for me, it's like I thought it was like me going in there and being able to share Christ and witness and just like just really just be be the light. And it's cool. Like that's part of it. But even just for me to be able to see different things in my own life and like me growing is something that I've been experiencing. Like to realize that you know what, everybody around me needs Jesus. But I need Jesus just as much. Amen. And that's that's the thing that's really been. Wow. Cool for I'm me. super pumped now. To be honest with you, I'm super pumped because <laughs> I don't think you know, I've, I've been praying. No, nah, nobody shared that with me. But you know, we've been really praying. You know, I was praying for that for a long time. That you know, people will step up in the different trailer parks. Like I lived there. I lived over at yeah. Lincoln Crest. A bunch of them. Just that people will step up and you know, almost get like a trailer park ministry going. Yeah, yeah. You know and it's I mean? not. It's not like I put a big sign out and say yeah. this is something, something. It's just that's my house, so, and just yeah. you know. To, which which one is it? Just uh, twenty four. Twenty four. But I'm saying, all right. Come so in, you make it right, and you go down the When they came the in there down at the bottom, there was a big trailer. That was one that we had, and then there's one that's condemned over in the back corner. We was in that one too. Okay. For a while, I'm trying to think which one you were in. Twenty four. That's when you're coming down the hill. Yep, it's on the uh, left. On the left right hand in the middle, side. Directly in the middle of all the trailers, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. It was pretty much run yeah, it was run down. <laughs> it was it was a joke. I went in there and I was like praying the whole way there and I was wanting to talk to this guy and I heard all things about the landlord and stuff. I heard all kinds of terrible stories on him. So I'm praying the whole way there, riding my motorcycle. Called him up and told him I was there, talked to him about moving in. And he's like, Oh, I'm fifteen minutes late and little Troy comes up to me. So what are you doing, Derek? And I guess I knew him from Youth Center. I'm just starting to get to know him. And I was like, well, I'm looking for a place to, to rent. He's like, you're not moving in here, are you? You don't want to move in here. And I was like, well, <laughs> actually, I do. <laughs> I do, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, don't don't get trailer number 48. It has an oil leak. So anyhow, long story short. my trailer. <laughs> long, long, long story short, um, I went in and looked at it. And for probably between a minute and three minutes, I was like, huh, this is, there's no way. Like, I'm like wait, <laughs> wading through trash, and there's like, stuff that's rotting like clothes rot rotting and like <laughs> insulation falling down you get to the back in the back room there's cat like poop and like a big like the the wood saturated with urine like cat urine yeah. and like there's no windows yeah. you can see the tin from the inside like on the out like it it, it was like i'm like shaking my head i'm like no nah. like the plumbing's like goes running through like this i'm just like yeah no nah. and then i remember oh yeah well, hang on I, I already told the lord yes so it's like yeah I'll take it and I, I was only, <laughs> only after I, I paid the guy that all of a sudden I just had this like overwhelming uh, joy. I had like the greatest ride back home to my parents' place that day. I was just like, for some reason, it was just like, just being able to just follow through and obedience. It's not always. Um, How long you been in there? It's not always uh, just peaches and cream, but it's uh, since July. Okay. Since and it's pretty interesting too, July. like in that trailer park. Like it, it seems all. You know, at first it seems run down and yeah. and tough and stuff like yeah. that, but the people are real loving just, and accepting yeah. of you yeah. there. It's, it's like when you're there, it's like a family in there. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, when I, when I first moved in that, yeah. that night, um, I went right away that next night, I guess it was, and started cleaning out before I moved in. I took like 30, 55 gallon bags of trash out, and I just felt the darkness all around me. Like, for mm -hmm. me, like being a, like a, a raised in a Christian home, I lived under a rod. I mean, <laughs> like, I have no, uh, I don't know how to say, it, the video's not gonna be long enough for me to explain that. But anyhow, I'm, this trailer park life and me were like, like there's no, there was no like, I, I was, it was pretty great. Cause like, yeah. and yeah, I could see times where the Lord would have prepared for me for it. Um, but yeah, just to see that and just to be, I remember being there for two weeks and taking a nap one day in my hammock and I woke up and I'm like, what am I doing here? I just had a laugh. Like, God's so good. Like, it's awesome. Like, like it's. Well, I'm it's definitely just, amazed, yeah. and it's hard to, you know, shock or amaze me sometimes. But I mean, God always does. But yeah. Yeah. you know, for people to do it, it's a little hard. But uh, you know, just seeing that the prayer was answered, you know, that you know, 
God gave you that overwhelming feeling, you moved in there, and that some of the people were in there having a chance to, you know, maybe see you as a light, and that God's continuing to do something there about even a prayer that I forgot I even prayed, you know, a long time ago. I mean, I'll pray constantly for the different places, the different friends, the different people, but sometimes, you know, you tend to think as people like, man, I got to get back there. I got to be a witness and go back here. But yeah. God don't need me to. You know, God knows my heart's for a lot of the people in there and the different places. And, you know, God's going to handle that. But it's neat that, you know, it happened in a way where you heard our prayers at the church and God was moving and then you come there and now we're here tonight yeah, just driving by it. like we yeah. just drove by. And we was like, hey, let's pull in there and get some people's testimony videos at the Honeybrook Youth Center. Yeah. So we pull in here get his and then hear to hear that like that's just mind-boggling right there like that just shows God's mighty and moving and we always try to relate something to the video about stuff that was going on now at the beginning the kids were doing heel flips and stuff and uh, that's how God is heel flipping in love over us you know what I mean if you had a if you could portray God's love in a sound what sound would that be God's love in a sound <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> Um, sound. I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. You mean like? Like one person said, ah, another person said, woohoo! Oh, that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a Chewbacca said, ah. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I'm not sure. There you go. He just made a sound. It was uh, a laugh. You know, God can be, God can be a laugh, and a laugh is joyous. Yeah. yeah. So maybe God's love could be portrayed in the sounds of laughter. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I just pulled that off the top of my head, but cool. you know, no, hey. that works. <laughs> but uh, God bless you, man. Thank hey, you, you for too, sharing that with me. This was a good interview. I'm glad to hear about the trailer park. So everybody that's out there. Send us your Jesus story and also pray, continue to pray for the trailer parks, continue to pray for Brandy Monteris, continue to pray for this brother in there, being a light in my old trailer park. Amen. Metal light. Metal light.